This video is going to discuss how to use range bars and find certain patterns that help you, you know, trade well, basically. The, the first step is obviously use the currency meter to be watching the strongest currencies looking for buys and the weakest currencies looking for sales. It's that simple. So you can see the dollar and the yen were both weak last night on pretty much all time frames except uh, the daily, weekly, monthly trend obviously was more up in the yen than it was in the, the dollar. So if you want to stack the odds in your favor, the dollar was less strong and therefore and also you know more weak than the yen, uh, other than at times uh, the real time weakness. Uh, the pound was strong on all time frames. The euro on most time frames except the monthly trend, which really is the last time frame trend to switch. So it's really not worth worrying too much about. You could have bought the euro dollar, the pound dollar, the CAD is also strong, and after it looks like uh, 904, 905, the Swiss uh, is also strong. So that means you want to sell the dollar Swiss. So we're going to start with the euro dollar, and this is a five minute chart, but I'm going to pull up a six pips per bar chart. And when you find a strong currency, basically one of my favorite patterns is to look for a three to eight bar pullback. It really doesn't matter as long as wherever the pullback is, is either above the hourly moving average or if it's above or right near uh, support levels. We have the 50 level. 50 in whole numbers tend to be support resistance. In other words, there tends to be buyer orders here. We have the weekly pivot, 10-day moving average, and one of my Fibonacci uh, levels that I do each night so you don't have to. So let's just count up all the number of trades today by buying a 3 to 5 bar pullback. One, two, three, four red bars in a row. You wait for the first green bar, and then you simply buy when it goes one pip above that bar's high. So you, that would be pretty much at 31.71. You also see on this pullback, it always helps when you have strength on the way up, virtually no weakness on the way down. It doesn't ensure or guarantee your success, but it increases odds in your favor. And you can see in this case, the market kind of went sideways, and then it more than likely stopped you out. So unfortunately, you got stopped out, and it went up and out you. The second trade, uh, you only have two bar pullback right here, and you only have a two bar pullback right here. So that does not meet the criteria. You do not look for an entry here. Here you have th one, two, three, four bar pullback, one bar green. You buy it when it goes one, right above here. It goes from 59 all the way up to 77. So it's almost a 20 pip profit, whether you got out here at the trailing stop or whether you got out at this resistance area, 20 day moving average. You can see earlier it wasn't strong enough to even get to the upper containment bands. And a wick on a range bar tends to be reversal. Notice wicks, wicks, wicks on the bottom tend to reverse up, wicks on the top. You know, and I'm, I'm talking about a big wick like this, big wick like that. That means the bar opens, goes up, comes down, and closes here. It, at the very least, when you see a wick bar like that, you might want to exit half your trade uh, when it goes underneath that bar's low, and then the trailing stop for the second half. All right, so you're out of this trade with a small, let's just say 12 to 15 pip net profit. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars in a row down, one bar up. It didn't break any major support here, and on the way down, it didn't have that much weakness. Always look at that. The, this one right here fell with a lot more weakness than the second one. This one kind of just gradually came down without much intensity. Uh, one green bar, you buy it when it goes above this bar's high right here at 31.56. And you can see the trailing stop on that one kept you all the way in here. This one took off. It broke above all resistance. The euro became super strong after 9. Uh, let's go back to the range chart. After 9, the dollar became one of the weakest ones. The euro became the strongest one. And, you know, you had a huge win. Let's say you got in here at 56 and you got out at the trailing stop. Uh, you made about 40 pips. Remember, 10 pips a day doubles your account every two months. So this is almost an entire week's worth of profit here. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the pound during the U.S. session later in after 9 was uh, weak. You don't want to ever buy or sell two red ones against each other or buy or sell two green ones against each other. But earlier in the day, it was strong. So until really about 9, you wanted to be looking for buys in the pound dollar. I will bring up the pound dollar on here. And here's your first instance of that. Three bar pullback. Broke from below to above the hourly moving average. You put your 
entry right above this bar's high. Notice on the way up there, it didn't have uh, plus 80 strength. It didn't have extreme strength. I prefer to buy pullbacks where they do. However, it did hit the upper, you know, 1.5 containment band. So you're in this trade right here at 41. I put my stop right underneath the previous day's low. And it slightly went up, and then it came back down, and then it kind of went up again, the wick on the high here. So really, I'm moving my stop up very quickly after it doesn't take off right away uh, below this bar's low. And more than likely, I would have lost five or six pips on it. Two bar pullback doesn't count. Three bar pullback, you're long right here at 42. Went all the way up to 50, 55. So the, basically, the, the nut, nuts and bolts of this are most of the time you're going to find some winning trades. Here's a nice pullback right here. One, two, three, four bars green. You're in. Unfortunately, you got a wick right here. And, you know, wicks are usually reversals. So if you want, move your stop up underneath here and lose four pips. Three bar pullback again. You're in. And in this case, you have another wick. And it always helps to have, you know, move your stop up a few pips underneath the ledge just so you don't get totally stopped out. But it goes up. You have another wick on the top, reversal. It went up with almost no strength. If you see a trend that's going up with no momentum and you have the chance to make, even if it's three pips or five pips, and in this case, we would have been in at 38. It went all the way up to 54. If you have the chance to make 16 pips minus your spread, you know, you might want to exit half your trade here when it comes down and then let the other trailing stop get you out of the other half and so forth. But notice after three bar pullbacks, green, and I love the three to eight bar pullbacks that have a green bar with a wick on it because that just adds to your probability. These are very, wicks are high probability reversal signals, and anytime you can see a, a three to five bar pullback with a wick, uh, it, it's a very high odds trade. Now remember, the dollar was weak, uh, the Swiss was also strong, so we want to sell the dollar Swiss. Trends down, three bars up, red right here. Uh, stop a few pips above the high. This one kind of just went sideways. Notice it fell with less momentum than it had before. Two bar pullback doesn't count. Three bar pullback right here, you're short. It fell about eight or nine pips. Um, not the most intensity. You might have got out of that with break even or five pip win or whatever. And then the last trade, one, two, three, four bars up, one bar red. You sell it when it goes underneath here at 34. And it came all the way down to uh, 91. So a 40 pip move. You know, whether you caught 20 of those 40 pips or 30 or 35 uh, depends on your exit method. More than likely, as it com is coming down with a lot of weakness right here, I can see on this bar right here, it's kind of starting to lose a little momentum. It's at the previous day's low. I'm going to watch that. If it breaks underneath the previous day's low, stops should get hit. It should go down. It's at the lower 2.0 white containment band, which is typically a reversal. So I'm, you know, more than likely going to get out of this as soon as it comes back above the previous day's low right here. Uh, it's also the whole number. There should be buying here, which there was. So I probably, seeing that the 9100 is here, I would exit exited half here, and then when it went underneath the low and came back up, I would have got out of the second half here. So I'm